Instead of this question, they ask another. What brings you here? I get it from all of them. The driver who picked me up from the airport with my name on cardboard. The one who works for my mother's former classmate, Sherry. The Fayumi doorman of the building downtown who took my bags up without asking, against my protests. Madame Fadia, the cleaning lady, who was waiting in the apartment to hand over the keys. Then a few days later, Sherry herself, a woman with a moist, cosmetically bloated face, who lives in Zamelik with her two tiny dogs. She is one of those desperate women, like my mother, who, the more effort they put into their appearance, the older they look. We sat on her balcony while a Sudanese maid came and went with tea, then sabli and pitifur, then red and white wine, and I squirmed at the horror of being served by a black woman with a kerchief tied around her head. What brings you to Cairo, dear? Sherry asked, but before I could tell her she had moved on. I haven't seen your mother since 89, you know that? I don't blame her. It's not a good time to be here. A few years ago, okay, I could understand. Post-revolution, everyone was coming back all excited. Ask me where they are now. I looked at her blankly. She made pedaling cycles with her cigarette hand until I recited, Where are they now? Then she continued as though I hadn't. Twenty pounds to the dollar. This is the exchange rate today. A year ago it was eight. Tell your mother I miss her. The resemblance between them was uncanny, actually. The same vanity, the femme fatalism, the overpowering smell of creams and powders. You just knew she spent too much time alone in front of mirrors, crying. I had not spoken to my mother since I left New York, where she'd been grilling me almost hourly. Why are you going there? Now that I have gone there, the question has folded on itself, put a foot in its mouth. Why have you come here? This is the first thing people ask when they meet me, and their tone is more indignant than inquisitive. The more they discover, the more offended they are. You live in America? Have American passport? Do you know what people here would give for an American passport? We are all trying to leave, and you have the option to be there, but instead, why are you here? I try to explain that America is not heaven, that there are problems everywhere. Trump, I say, but it is the wrong thing to say, to the driver, to the doorman. Madame Fadia, the cleaning lady, was the only one who believed me and seemed pleased to hear it. The people are warmer here, kinder, more humane, I continued, as though I had been in Cairo for longer than four hours when I met her and could possibly have an opinion. She was excited by this wanted me to elaborate, which I did. Egyptians are warmer, she repeated after me when I was done, and her relief was palpable, as if I had confirmed a private fantasy she had been cultivating for years. I have never been interested in traveling outside myself. Some of my brothers work in Saudi. They always say it is cleaner outside and the money's good, but I've never wanted to leave. No place is better than any other. We only think it is. I agreed with Madame Fadia initially. She was agreeing with me after all.